We are at, uh, at a very important uh, moment, really, in what uh, capacity, in the life of capacity development. Um, we have some examples that are going, some, t some p cases that are going to be presented to you. I think a lot of work has, has been done within the Commission, a lot of uh, documents have been prepared, a lot of awareness has been raised. Now you're going to, you have on your table a toolkit for capacity development, since the, the mapping of, uh, uh, of the e last EAMR has shown that almost all technical, Im important uh, technical assistance was uh, technical cooperation was for capacity development uh, and therefore I think the moment has come to learn from practical cases what's happening there. Uh, are we doing what we need to do? Uh, are we and what are the constraints? And I think we cannot advance in on our own house alone. We can uh, raise the awareness of the UN, we can still try to federate other donors around us, uh, we can still try to work better, we have, uh, we have to enhance uh, and we have to have a tool of the twinning. Certainly there are things we need to do, but then what are the constraints? What do our partner uh, think about it. I said at least one year ago, at least more, when I presented to the OECD DAC uh, the, the backbone pr uh, strategy, I said, okay, uh, the moment we're doing capacity development, it raises a lot of responsibilities on the head of our partners. Uh, do we know if they want to take these responsibilities? Do we know if they are with us? Because otherwise uh, we, we, we work in a sort of a vacuum. We are using our energies for that. So the moment has come really to turn on the practical cases. Is it working and why is, is it working? Is it not working and why is it not working? And address uh, the constraints. And, uh, and please, this is your moment, please also tell, discuss what are the constraints you personally are facing in, uh, when you're talking about, when you're assessing capacity development projects. Um, what, what makes, uh, this, this, is, this should be a complete uh, change of attitude toward technical cooperation. <coughs> is it happening and why is it not happening? Please discuss it really very candidly and very frankly, because otherwise we are not going to go anywhere uh, in the future. And you know how important it is uh, to change uh, the way uh, we approach capacity development. But as I'm saying, not everything is on our uh, shoulders. It can be on our partner shoulders. And this is uh, what you're going to discuss today. The concept of capacity development is this broad. And this white, it's, it's, it's very difficult to get hands off. Are we talking about capacity development? Does that mean a training course of two hours? Or does it mean fixing uh, the health system uh, in the United States? Uh, just to mention two extremes. Both could say, well, we're strengthening the capacity of the health system in the United States to deliver, or we are making a training course of two hours for some individuals. And obviously, thinking about these two things with the same mindset doesn't make much sense. It's, it's two totally different things. But we call both of them something that might contribute to capacity development. So, so this is important to see what level we are pitching at, because it makes such a difference. Then we would move, you may have seen the program here, and that's basically what I'm referring to, uh, to a change in conception. I'll try to argue with the stories that this is uh, needed away from focusing a lot of capacity and to focus much more on change readiness. I'll explain what I mean with change readiness, but when Francesca talked about the partner and putting more emphasis on the partner, is this difficult concept of ownership. And it's, it's actually inspired very much by the technical cooperation reform where we focused a lot about on ownership 
but to make this a tangible thing where we go out and say, are, are our partners willing to invest? Are they willing to develop their capacity? Is maybe the first and basic question. Because then we can come with all, yes, but you need capacity. Oh, yes, but you, you should do like this. But if we start there, we get lost because we don't get our partners with us. <coughs> and then we'll look at tools and processes. The toolkit, which you have here, I'll refer to that as we go along, and also discuss uh, other tools you have in-house, uh, not least the quality support group mechanisms where the uh, grid for assessing technical uh, cooperation is an opportunity to check in a sense, beyond technical cooperation, also capacity, the approach, if there is an approach to capacity development. 